I'm, I'm going to let my wife, she want to share a little scripture because uh, we are going through something at the moment. Like I said, we're going through it. So I'm going to let her share a little something right quick. Good night. Uh, Proverbs. Yes, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Mm -hmm. A phrase I want to say, God is so faithful. No matter what you're going through, God is faithful. You got to trust him no matter what. Sometimes it seems like God is not answering you. He hasn't answered you, but God has already answered you. And we have to walk in what God already told us, that we was healed, not waiting to be healed, but we healed already. Because I told my husband, I had to have a talk with God. I'm like, Lord, my heart is right. I'm walking in love. What is going on? It seems like God is taking a long time, but God told me, my time is not your time. And you have to be patient. And I say, Lord, just one word, <laughs> and it's, it could be done. Amen. You created my kidney, so I know my kidneys is working, Lord. What's taking me so long? And I'm going to tell you, I'm being honest, I got a little aggravated with God. Oh, yeah. And people get mad with God because they feel like God not answering, but God has already answered you. He healed you. He healed me already. I just have to be a little more patient Amen. because God promised me, you know, and I'm walking on his word, and I'm walking in truth that I'm healed already, and I'm walking in abundant life. Amen. Not waiting to walk in it, I'm walking in it. Speak it by faith. So y'all be blessed, and wait on God, be patient, and say what the word say. The word said you're whole. The word said you're healed. Amen. And yes, you are. And I'm a living testimony after all that I've been through. We are whole. Amen. Let me strip it right here. Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. There you go. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Talking about the word of God. Write them on the table of your heart. And so find favor. Amen. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's it. And lean not to your own understanding. Sometimes we lean to our own understanding mm -hmm. and get aggravated. Mm -hmm. So right here telling you, trust in the Lord with all our heart. Mm -hmm. And lean not to our own understanding. Acknowledge it in all his ways. Yes, he shall Lord. direct the path. Let me see what path. Amen. I can't see what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct that path. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, those of you all that have your Bible, will you turn to me, turn with me to uh, Samuel, 1 Samuel, mm -hmm. Thank you, 13th chapter, verse 1. And we're going to talk about this, this, this guy named Saul. Saul was king over Israel. Uh, the children of Israel, uh, uh, Samuel had got old and his sons, they wasn't doing right. And uh, they wanted a king. And they, uh, they went to Samuel and said, look, we want a king. We want to be like the other nations. Mm -hmm. So, of course, Samuel was not in agreement. But anyway, God told Samuel, hey. Talking to their voice, because this is what they want. They have not rejected you, they have rejected me. My brothers and sisters, be very careful of what you ask for. God will allow you to have some of that. But if you read this, these chapters, you'll find out that they, that Samuel warned them that if they got this king, what was going to happen? How uh, your your sons and daughters uh, would was the, would have become their servants. How he was going to take their vineyards and different things and, and so on and so forth. But they said, "Look, we want a king anyway." So anyway, they got Saul. Saul was anointed as king over Israel. So let's pick it up because we want to know: Did we hear from God? I can remember I used to tell my kids all the time, I said, Love, 
when you're out there in the streets, there's a lot of voices that's counseling you and telling you. And a lot of these folk out there, they really sound like they know what they're talking about. But you got to hear my voice. You got to hear your mother's voice because you know our position on a lot of these things. But you got to discern one voice from another voice to know what's good and what's not good. Because we, are, we can't hold your hand when you're out there. But when it hits the fan, they always want to hear our voice then. But we always come out. Not to pull them out of the hole, but we get in the hole and get them out of the hole. And we get dirty a little bit ourselves mm -hmm. because of our love. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about this King Saul here. Let's pick it up here. And uh, well, let's just go ahead on and start from verse 1. Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose for himself 3,000 men of Israel. 2,000 were with Saul and Michmash. And in the mountains of Bethel, and thousands were with Jonathan and Gebiah of, Je of uh, Benjamin. The rest of the people he sent away every man to his tent. And Jonathan attacked the garrison of Philistines that was in Geba. And the Philistine, and they heard of it. Saul blew the trumpet throughout the whole of the land, saying, That thing he blew is here. Now all Israel heard and said, Saul had attacked the garrison of the Philistines, and that Israel had also become an abomination to the Philistines, and the people were called together to Saul that uh, Gal Galga. Then the Philistines got together to fight with Israel. 30,000 chariots, 60,000 horsemen, and the people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came to encamp in Mishmah, through the east of Bethel, even. When the men of Israel saw that they were in danger, for the people were distressed. Then the people hid in caves, in thickets, in rocks, in holes, and crossed over the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was still in Galga, and all the people followed him trembling. Then he waited seven days, according to the time set by him. But Saul did not come to Galga, and the people were scattered from him. So Saul said, bring me a burnt offering and a peace offering here to me. And he offered the burnt offering, and he offered the burnt offering. Now it happened as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering that Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he may greet him. And Samuel said, what have you done? Saul took upon himself to be a priest. That was completely and totally out of order. And Samuel had to come and ask him, what have you done? Well, he went on to talk about he did what, what God told him to do. God didn't tell him to do that because only the priest was to do that. Jesus was not only the Messiah, but Jesus was the priest. He was the high priest. He was a prophet. He was all, everybody in the Old Testament rolled up, up into one. What, what Saul had done, man, he was messing up. When you step out of your place and you thought you heard from God when you really didn't, this is, this is the type of things you would do. And thinking that you are doing God's will. Let's tell the truth. Well, I'm just saying, you got to make sure that you heard from God because that, he was definitely out of place right here. This is one instance when Saul was out of place. Let's turn over to Saul, the 15th chapter. Now, if you go on to read that chapter, Samuel told, Samuel told uh, Saul that 
Because you did this, man, you you're not gonna, your kingdom is not going to be established forever like it was supposed to be. Why? Because you was not doing the will of God. And you showed right there you did not have a heart for God. Now, I want you all to think about this. If you ever followed the scriptures in Samuel. And, and, and Samuel also told Saul, listen, God is going to see somebody who's after his own heart, which happened to be David. Now, David was God anointed. But David would not kill Saul. Why? Because he considered Saul to be God's anointed. So he would not touch Saul. But guess what? Saul ain't had no problem touching David. He had no problem touching God's anointed because why? He didn't have a heart from God and he wasn't hearing from God. That's why he was trying to kill David from day one. And any opportunity he had, he would try to kill David. Why? Because he just wasn't caring about God. He didn't care about nobody but himself. I'm telling you, you got to take yourself off the throne. It takes commitment. It takes sacrifice. It takes obedience. And that's the crux of this whole mess. You have to just obey. Many of people are in a lot of the stuff that they're into because they are self-inflicted wounds. Because of disobedience, just flat out. It's just that simple. They refuse to obey God. You have to obey the word of the Lord. That's true. What God is speaking to your heart. And whatever it is that God is speaking to your heart, let everything, every word be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Because if God is speaking to your heart, it's not going to be contrary to his word. I've had people tell me that God told them that this is their wife. They appoint to a woman. Say, that's my wife. I say, well, what about the wife you already got? Say. Oh, well, well, God told me to get rid of her. I said, well, that ain't God. Oh. God ain't telling you to do that. <laughs> because the word of God doesn't agree with what you're telling me God told you to do. Yeah, that was going against the word. I'm just saying. See, a lot, see, I remember one night God had spoke to my wife and I concerning investing. And we know we heard from God. But then we came to church, and we hadn't even talked to Greg and Lisa and them. But Greg was preaching, and he said the same thing. It was just a confirmation of what God had spoke to my heart, to my wife's heart. It was just a confirmation. You're going to get confirmed. And then we go to the Word, and God said, I'm going to give you every way you treat your soul, Lord. That's right, two or three witnesses. The Word of God has to agree with whatever God is speaking that you believe if God is speaking in your heart, then you got to have some Bible for it. You just have to. Or you can find yourself in trouble. But let's, let's go over here and pick it up in Samuel 1 and 15. It says, Samuel said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore heed to the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hope, I will punish Amalek for what they did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when they came up from Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them but kill both man, woman, infant, nursing, child, ox, sheep, camel, donkey. So Saul gathered the people together, numbered them in and uh, tell him, 200,000 foot soldiers, 10,000 men of Judah, and Saul came to the city of Amalek and laid in wait in the valley. Then Saul said to the Kenites, go, depart, get down from amongst the Amalek, Amalekites. These I destroy you with them, for you showed kindness 
to all the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. So the Canaanites departed from amongst the Amalekites. Saul attacked the Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Sur, which is in the east of Egypt. He also took Agai, king of the Amalekites, Amalekites alive and utterly destroy all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agai and the best of the sheep and the oxen and the fatness of the lambs and all that was good and were, un and were unwilling to utterly destroy them. But everything despised and worthless, that they utterly destroyed. That, that's disobedience right there. Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel, saying, I greatly regret that I have set up, set up King uh, Saul as king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And, he, and it grieved Samuel, and he cried out to the Lord all night. So when Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul went to Carmi, the, the Carmel, and indeed he set up a, a what? A monument for himself. He set up a monument for himself. Now he just disobeyed what God had told him to do. He told him all of to destroy everything. Man, woman, kids, uh, uh, animals, everything. Not only did he not do that, but then he brought the king back. But what voice is he hearing? Where is he going with this? So Samuel, the prophet, he's confronting him about this. Let's pick it up. 13, then Samuel went to Saul and said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the no. Then Samuel went to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. He thought he had did, he said he did the will of God. That, you heard what he said? He said, Look, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Listen. People really believe they're doing the will of God and they are complete opposite. And they really believe they are walking with God. Doing the exact opposite of what God told you to do. I, 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 I minister to them on a regular basis. And I have to tell them that's not God. God will never tell you to do that. Some folks get upset and they don't want to talk anymore. That's okay. Because I'm not get it to speak the truth to you. Because I, I, I'm i around people that speak the truth to my wife and I. Mm -hmm. Been speaking the truth to my wife and I. Because that's the only way you're going to ever grow. The truth will make you free. But you heard what, what Saul said right here. He said, look. Blessed are you of the Lord, for I have performed the commandment of the Lord. No, he didn't. Let's move on. But Samuel said, What then is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the loin of the oxen that I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them back from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said to Saul, be quiet. He told the king to shut up. He said, man, shut up. Ain't nobody want to hear this stuff you're talking about, man. This is nonsense, what you're talking about right here. This is not the will of God, man. You have disobeyed the commandment of the Lord is what you have done. But then he told him, be quiet, and I will tell you what the Lord said this night. You, be, you just be quiet. Let me tell you. And he said to him, speak on. So Sammy said, when you were a little in your, in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribe of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go and utterly destroy 
the sinners and the Amalekites and fight against them until they are consumed? Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you not swoop down on, in, on, on the sparrow and do evil? Why did you do evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to saying, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. Is, is that is, is that really the voice of the Lord? Are you obeying the voice of the Lord? What no, voice no, are you hearing? Mm. He said, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission in which the Lord sent me and brought back Agai the king of Amalekai. He didn't tell you to bring him back. Right. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekai, but the people look to the, to the plunder sheep and oxen the best of things which should I have, have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the king, your God, in God. Let me tell you this. You can go about doing it your way if you want. The decisions that you are making today, some of these decisions, I'm telling you, there is pleasure in sin for a season. For a season, that's it. But when that check comes, that check going to be so big, man, that you won't be able to pay it. I don't want it. Some decision that you make, not only is going to cost you, but it's going to cost your children, in some cases your grandchildren. Oh, Jesus. I'm telling you the truth. Be careful about the decisions you make. And we can see where the decision that Saul made it was all about Saul. He even went out and made a monument to himself. Mm -hmm. Read your word. Spend some time in your word. Read and find out where folk go wrong because all the divorces I know about, all I can hear the people talk about, me, 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 me. And I ain't taking this and I ain't taking that. And we're not even talking about infidelity. We're not talking about abuse. We're not talking about physical abuse or anything like that. It's just that I, I, I made a mistake. I think I married the wrong person. Really? No, man. That's not what's going on here. You got to stick to the vow you made before the Lord. You got to stick to the commitment you made before the Lord. Because I'm telling you, you can make that decision right now, but man, it's going to cost you down the line. And you know when it's, when it's happening. You know the decision you made got your kid over there with them folk over there because the decision you made 20 years ago. Hmm. And that would have never happened to your kid because they would have never been over there because you created that whole situation that's going on over there. The motive for this and what happened right here was Saul was only thinking about himself. That's why he built the monument to himself. And I mean, he just he did not, he was not going to listen to the voice of the Lord. He was not going to listen to nobody. But he said, oh, I will be the voice of the Lord. Is that you? Mm -hmm. Do you think you obeying and walking with the Lord when you are doing a complete total opposite? That's the question that you need to ask yourself because if you're doing something, then you need to go check in the Word of God and see if this is really what God wants for you in your life. Because listen, you are bigger than what you think you are because as a father, as a husband, as a wife, as a mother, man, your children, your grandchildren, they're looking up to you. And you carry a lot of weight. You can't afford True. to go out there with that foolishness. True. You can't afford it because yes. it's going to cost everybody. And this costs so his kingship. Jonathan got killed. He wanted to kill Jonathan. He just wasn't hearing from God at all. That's right. I'm telling you, man, if you just read the word, you'll find out whether you 
in the spirit or you're in some other spirit. Because they are they've got some other spirits out there. Mm -hmm. that, so you gotta find out if you flowing with the spirit of God though. And we all have to check ourselves on this. So I'm not gonna be up here long before you. I'm never, I, I, I never am. I just wanted to come by and say this: that we have to recheck whether we hear from God. I know. Tell the truth. We have to, because we can't afford to miss the mark too many times because too many people is hanging on it. Mm -hmm. That is so true. We can't afford. To, we just can't afford to go out there and get involved in some pleasure. That's gonna cost everybody. And it could cost you your life. See, just saying, what David did, even though he was a man after God on her, what he did, the soul never departed from his house. Be careful, my brothers and sisters. Stay in prayer. Stay in your word. Watch Christian TV. Ain't nothing wrong with watching a movie or a <laughs> sitcom or whatever. Ain't nothing wrong. But some of that stuff, man, is having a bad influence on you. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you can't not sit there and watch all them reality shows with people cutting up and it don't have no kind of impact or influence on you. Mm -hmm. It does. Be careful now. Because you watch it, your kids will watch it, your grandkids will watch it. Time. Okay. Amen. So I, I just want to say that. So you see here, and if you turn to the Corinthians, the 10th chapter, they tell you, let what they did be an example to us. That we don't lust after evil things. That we don't do the same thing. That we don't follow the same sins that they follow. Now my wife and I, we we only been married thirty seven years. I can tell you the truth. It's by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. That's just the plain truth. Mm. And now I'm helping her, helping her back on her feet. And like she said, we both praying. And I say, Lord, you know, you promised us that we have life and that we have it more abundantly. What's going on? But though you slay me, I'll never be lost. Because he's been too good to us. He's been too good to Paul and myself. I know that's the truth, his mercy. Because we ain't got no business still married. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Mm -hmm. That's just the truth, y'all. And we've been to a lot of weddings. We've been married 37 years. We were together two years before that. So that's 39 years. But we have been to a lot of weddings. And we have, we have seen a lot of divorces. And we tried to hold folk and tell them, look, don't, don't do this. But they, some of these folks did it anyway, and guess what? They jumped out the frying pan into the fire. Lord, have mercy, I ain't got time to tell you some of the stories. Mm -hmm. I bad. Mm -hmm. And they wish they'd have stayed together, mm -hmm. but now you can't go back there now. Because you went too far. Mm -hmm. That's just the truth. But if we made a commitment in the presence of God, covenant. come on now, we made a covenant. Mm. Yeah. In, the, in his presence. Yeah. I know what his word says. So his word kept me a lot of the years by just simply doing what God told me to do. And his word said, man, flee immorality. Mm -hmm. Flee youthful lust. Mm -hmm. Get from around that. Mm -hmm. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> That's just simple. Go home. And sometimes it wasn't the best situation at home, but guess what? I went home anyway. I'm in here with this woman. She's coming home with me. To obey 
is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That's just that simple. It's just that simple. And I preach the same thing to my kids, but most of all, I tried to live it before them. I don't want to tell y'all one thing and doing something different. I don't want to tell you to do as I say, but not as I do. No, follow me as I follow Christ. Because everything is on the line here. It's hard to win somebody offended because you went astray. So I'm simply saying, so, kept telling Samuel, I will be the voice of the Lord. I did the commandments of the Lord. I did what the Lord told me to do. That's what he kept on telling the, the prophet. Let me tell you something, very few prophets had enough stuff to tell the king to say, shut up. He said, shut up. It's foolishness what you're talking about, man. And Samuel cut the king up himself. You can't act as a priest. Sacrifice a burnt and peace offering. What are you doing? It's not your job. Oh, the Lord, the Lord ain't tell you to do that. Leaving your wife and your kids. The Lord told me, I'm like, the Lord ain't told you to do that. But these folks walking right now. And Lord, they wish they never made that decision. So my brothers and sisters, spend some time in your word, know the voice of God. Stick to the commitment that you made in the presence of God. And, and, and let me tell you something, sticking to your commitment, it's not sexy, it don't look good. It's not something that you put on. Listen, it's rough, it's rough sometimes, real tough. Sometimes the last place I wanted to go was home. But that's where my that's 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 my commitment. That's what I said. April 18th, 1984. Yeah. That's what I said. <clears throat> so in the long run, you just do what God tells you to do, and you will see the blessings all over your life, and on your kids' life, and on your grandkids' life. Marriage is for grown folk. Mm. Most of us didn't even know what we were doing when we got. I know I didn't know what I was doing when I got married. I had no idea what I was getting to. And I said, man, I said, Lord, I ain't signed up for this. That's exactly what I signed up for. Mm. But you're going to have to grow up and mature to do and obey the voice of God. You're going to have to grow up. If you want to grow spiritually, if you want to mature as a man, as a woman, 